Hi, I'm Kent. I've been doing a lot of slip casting recently and in particular been trying out colored slips. However, that means my supply of regular slip has dwindled down to just about nothing and it's time to make some more. When I was just getting into pottery, I'd heard some recommendations to actually make slip out of dry clay instead of regular wet clay. Now that I've been doing pottery for a while, I was trying to think about why you might want to do it from dry clay. And I can think of two different reasons. One is to be able to hydrate the clay. When the clay is dry, it is often in small pieces, so the water can get into it much easier. The other reason is you may not know the content of the water in the wet clay, so you don't know how much water to add to get to your slip. Or said another way, you don't know what the final percentage of water in your slip actually is. I've been very careful about my water content in my slip, but as I do this more and more, I want to try and improve my process a little bit, and so I want to start tracking that. So in this video, I'm going to go ahead and make a new batch of slip, but first I want to try and actually measure the water content in my clay so I can account for it properly. So this is the clay I've been using recently. It's the Laguna B mix. And what I want to do now is measure the water content. I'm going to take a little bit of clay off and measure the weight of that. And then I will let the clay fully dry out and see what the final weight is. The difference is water. So I'm just gonna wire off a little bit and we'll see what we end up with. grams. I think I'm going to target 100 grams. The larger the sample I have, uh, the more accurate this is going to be, but I don't want so much clay that it's going to take forever to dry out. I'm also going to measure this once. Since this clay is coming from Laguna all mixed up, I'm going to assume that their process is relatively stable. It might vary a little bit, but I think that'll be okay. So I'll go ahead and tie that back up so none of the water escapes. The other thing I'll note is that this is a fresh bag of clay, so I never opened it before. All right, so we have 100 grams of clay here. So I have one of my wood bats that I've been using. I'm gonna put it on here. I've cleaned it off pretty well, so there's no clay that I might pick up along the way. So I could just put it there and let it dry. However, I think for it to dry faster, I want as much surface area as possible. So I want as much surface area in contact with the wood so the wood can suck out the moisture, and as much surface area to the air side so that the air can wick it away as well. So that basically means I need something big and flat. and ideally somewhat uniform in terms of thickness. All right, make sure it's not stuck down. All right, well, that's not pretty, but it should work. So we'll let that dry out and come back to it to weigh it again. The clay has been sitting for a few days, so it's all dried out now. Let's go ahead and weigh it and see how much the dry portion of the clay is. So we're at 81 grams. I'm going to guess this is probably 80% water. Uh, this is a relatively small sample, um, plus or minus a gram. I don't know how good my scale actually is. So we're going to go with that. So we know that the raw clay that I get straight from Laguna, all packaged up, has by weight 80% clay and 20% water. So I can use that number now to mix up my slip. All right, so here's my slip bucket. There's a little bit of slip in the bottom, but not much. And here's my clay. So as I mentioned to start, the other reason why we potentially don't want to start with wet clay besides moisture content is uh, really around surface area. We want all the water that we're going to add to be able to hydrate the clay very well so we can turn it into slip. So what I'm going to do for that is basically just take my wire tool and slice up a bunch of pieces and throw it in the bucket. I'm also going to throw in my clay. So this is only 100 grams. I think the 20 grams of water I won't miss. So I'm not going to be too careful about this. It doesn't really matter too much. I just want to make sure there's surface area. I'm 
trying to stack these in there relatively loosely. All right, that's one 25 pound bag of clay. So I have 25 pounds of clay. If it's 20% water, that means I have five pounds of water already in here. All right, let's do a little bit of math. So the 25 pounds of water is 11.34 kilograms. We're gonna do this in kilograms because one kilogram of water is the same as one liter of water. So the current clay that I have is 80% clay and 20% water. So the dry weight of the clay in here is times 0.8. So we basically have nine kilograms of dry clay that I just put in. And now we need a target slip weight. So I'm gonna go for 30% water. If I want 30% water, then the nine kilograms would be 70% of the final weight. So I need to divide by 0.7. So my final weight would be 12.96 kilograms. And now I need to subtract off the current weight, which is 11.34. So I need to add 1.62 kilograms of water, which is 1.62 liters of water, to get to 30% by weight water in my slip, 70% by weight dry clay in my slip. So I'll go ahead and measure up 1.62. All right, my tub is only in half liter increments, but I think I've got that pretty close. So we'll add the rest of the water. So the last thing I need in my slip is Darvan 7. And looking at the data sheet for Darvan 7, it says between 0.2 and 1% of Darvan 7 by body weight, by dry body weight. So let's shoot for, last time I used on the high side, let's use a 0.75%. Nine kilograms times 0.0075, that's 0.75%. That's 68 grams of Darvan 7. So I'll go ahead and weigh that up. All right, that's 70, that should be close enough. So one thing you'll notice, or maybe one thing you won't notice is a lot of water in here. So there's some at the very bottom, and you may not be able to, and you can probably just barely see it. So now what I need to do is basically shove the clay down into the water and let it all hydrate. And to do that, I have this piece of dowel that I've been using. So basically I'll just shove it down and then get it into the water. What I don't want to do is press the clay so tight together that all the water squeezes out. I really just want to try and get some of the air out. All right, there we have it, all the water and the clay. So basically the game now is to let this sit, mix it up, let it sit, mix it up. So I guess the final reason why you might want to start with bone dry clay is again, due to surface area. If you have lots of small pieces, uh, the water can get at the clay from all sides. Here, there's less places to do so. That would mean the clay may hydrate faster um, if it's broken up into smaller chunks. I'm not in a particular hurry. Um, I've still got some other things to do with other pots before I need a new slip. So I'm just gonna let this sit for a few days and keep tending to it every now and then. All right, it's a few days later and all I've really done is mix up the slip. So the consistency is really good. I might need to mix it a little bit more when I actually go to use it. But right now the slip is in a very usable state. So what I'll do is I'll take some of it and transfer it into a smaller container. I have this tub here that I can put it in and then I'll use that to pour into my plaster molds. So can you make slip out of regular clay? The answer is yes, you don't need to dry it out first. So one of the issues is the moisture that's already in the clay. So we actually measured that for this and put in the right amount of water to bring our water level up to exactly where we wanted it. By using the weight of the dry clay, we could also put in the Darvan 7, the deflocculant in the amount that we want. And then the other consideration is speed. So I put in relatively big blocks, as you saw. If they were smaller, it probably would have gone a lot faster, but I wasn't particularly in a hurry. I hope you found that interesting. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thanks.